Now what? Now the branches keep on growing and we tell the people of the TVA the truth about this place. And you think people are going to be ready to hear that? People have lives on the timeline, Mobius. I know. They should have the chance to live those lives. Think about it. Hey, everything you've been doing is wrong and all your gods are dead. How are people going to take that? <sighs> we have to give it a shot. Hey, uh, Mobius? Loki was just here looking for you. Loki's here? He was, and then he disappeared. I don't understand. He disappeared right in front of me. He looked like he was in pain. Maybe Miss Minutes can locate him. You just saw him. I did. Miss Minutes? Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about Loki season two, episode one, or Burrows. I think of Arrow Burrows when I read it, <laughs> but it's a, it's or Burrows, which actually is one of the characters names. So yeah, uh, OB, <laughs> OB. But like I stated, this is a spoiler full. So if you have not watched it, Loki season two, episode one. Or borrows, please stop the episode now that you're listening to. Go back, watch the actual Loki season two, episode one, and then come back and listen to us. If not, and you want to be spoiled, fine, so be it. Have fun, and we'll we'll talk about stuff you could look for. But with that, we're going to be. Uh, this is the first of season two, and we're glad that Loki is back. We're happy about that. It's been so long since. Uh, we got to see the TVA and Loki and Mobius and the rest of the group. So I'm glad that we're back. And with that, we have a synopsis for this episode. Actually, hold on. I put in a wrong synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> it looks right. No, no. This The one. Uh, all right. I put one in there that was on line that somebody else had done. I'm going to put in the other one at the very bottom of it if you okay. could see that i yeah. updated it okay so, do you want me to read both or you just want to do read the bottom one first that's the official okay. one from disney and then okay. you can read the other one okay all right uh well the the official official synopsis is uh short and sweet loki finds himself lost to time and torn quite literally between past present and future yeah and then uh, the other one, the unofficial, they have evidence that every one of the TVA are variants and that the timekeeper's story is a lie. As this is happening, Loki reappears in a different timeline where images of he who remains and his variants decorate the war room and the TVA in general. I guess you could almost put that for the last episode of season one as well, because that happened right there at the end, I guess. Literally, that's that's yeah. exactly what had happened. So, But the official one, very short, brief, which... Literally tells you exactly what's happening to Loki. Yeah. <laughs> Sums up the episode nicely. Sums we're it up. No, we're done. <laughs> See you tonight. <laughs> no, but, there's a uh, lot. There, there's a lot that happens within this particular episode that we do get to meet the one major character, which is new, which is Ob uh, our Barrows. So let's talk about our Barrows a little bit uh, before we get into you know we could you know go backwards forwards. We could be like Loki himself and just (laughs) slip through the timeline and uh, and talk about like finer points. But let's talk about our Boros or OB, an interesting character. Yeah, I thought I thought it was cool to to, for his entrance, you know, especially the way he comes in. And and, uh, obviously we're going to have to get uh, that that short scene of Mobius. Uh, coming in to opening up the wrong door or the wrong floor and meeting OB uh, sometime in the past, 400 years ago, and and then just hightailing out and leaving. Uh, uh, we'll have to get that at some point. But I like that. that's our, our introduction uh, to to OB is the, the idea that uh, time does flow in the TVA, even though yes. the, the agents and the analysts don't realize it because they get their minds wiped so often. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that was never really explained it was kind of a confusing point to me but i i guess i get it if their minds are getting wiped that they don't understand the passage of time or they they thought time didn't didn't pass or maybe time yeah didn't flow or maybe it's just 
passing very slowly for them. I'm not sure what we're supposed to understand, but of course we have Loki breaking that, uh, realizing that he's moving from the past to the future to his present and back and forth. Yeah. It's, it's a strange form of events. We learn a lot. Now we learn about that time does flow in some way within the TVA. So that way it can be manipulated. Loki is going to and from within it. And I think of sometimes of, uh, I was thinking at first when I first watched the episode that it was an alternate timeline when Casey sees him and then he turns him in. Mm-hmm. So I'm, and then I realized, oh, wait, this is like more of a future or present or past. Well, when he shows up and it, they have to lock down Loki. Right. But, but that's when because remember the floor gets cracked. Yes. And that's and then when he when he jumps back to the present. He says, how long has that crack been there? And Casey says, well, I can uh, ever since I can remember. And that's because his, his mind was obviously wiped of the events of yes. Loki crashing through the window and making the making the crack. Obviously, his his mind has been wiped at some point after those events so that he doesn't remember when the crack occurred. So, which, yeah. which is funny, too, because if you watch the uh, the scene itself, when he actually he goes out the window goes into the mail truck it falls down and it goes right back in it gave me vibes of the fifth element with lilu when she Mm -hmm. fell yeah (laughs) yeah yeah when she fell into the cab and yeah yeah, but i loved it and then when when of course when the mail truck goes out the window and you hear the crash at the bottom you see loki do the groundhog day oh she'll be fine (laughs) (laughs) he looks down and goes she'll be fine she'll be fine Um, (laughs) um, so yeah i thought that was that was really cool but yeah it's it's this jumping around in time i it's i'm glad on one hand i'm glad that we appear to have gotten it solved because it seems that Loki has been extracted from the time stream. That's what happens there at the end when he, you know, yeah. when he comes flying out of the the oral loom, the time, the temporal loom, and blasts uh, Mobius and himself into back into the room before the blast doors can get closed. That he's we're not going to have any more of this time slipping because it would have been cool to kind of see some more of that, but. At the same time, it would have been very confusing. So I'm kind of glad yeah. we've, we've kind of ended that that storyline. But uh, I, I do kind of look forward to maybe at some point seeing, uh, you know, the the Mobius, the quick Mobius scene of him meeting uh, or Obi for the first time uh, and then just leaving. Uh, but Obi remembers it because Obi, you know, and that's another thing that that uh, uh, even Obi tries to say that time doesn't flow in the tva but he when they go into the room there the temporal um uh oral loom right mm-hmm. they go into the room he says i come up here every couple hundred years and run diagnostics yes so obviously he knows of some sort of passage of time because also he's the one that when mobius says oh yeah it was three or four and he says 400 years ago you know he is obviously ob knows about the past of time so there's something about this character that he doesn't have the same he's not getting the same treatment as the other tva agents are that he's not getting his mind wiped as often and that that would stand to reason because you don't want your repair and enhancement guy or advancement guy to have his mind wiped. You want him to be able to remember Mm. what he's doing. So that would be, and so it's going to be interesting to see if there's more to this character than what we're, what we're, uh, what we're getting at, at first glance. Yeah. I'm thinking he's a little bit more powerful, like just as powerful as he who remains. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's been around all this time, he doesn't age. Think about it. He's like yeah. over 400 years. And yeah, he's well, and none, of them, none of them age then, right? Because Mobius hasn't aged in 400 years either. Yeah, but they could always grab the, what they tend to do is grab other variants of them and mind wipe them. Uh, okay. I guess I could see so that. So they yeah, could I get could, it from another timeline from or something. Other variants. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's true. But he's, but like you said, he's almost a constant. Yes. Like he's got to be a constant because of what he does. For instance, he says, he talks about the TVA handbook and he says that he wrote it. Yep. He wrote the TVA handbook. So obviously he knows more about what's going on than what uh, what we're going to we, – we've got to get some more backstory on this guy. We've got to find out some more. Yeah, I like think you said, yeah, I think he's more powerful than Miss Minutes. Um, maybe because he would have been – he would know more about Miss Minutes than she 
Maybe. I don't know. I, well, it just, well, he it, talked about Miss Minutes and how she was running it. And then he has to come every, every once in a while to do diagnostics. Right. That's what I'm saying is, is yeah. so. So, yeah. So he knows about. Yeah. So it, there's more to this character than what. Uh, and so I'm, I'm excited to see where we're going to go with it. I hope he doesn't end up being a bad guy because I like the the sweetness <laughs> of him and and who he is. But uh, at the same time, uh, he could end up being a variant of he who remains. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, a possibility. We don't know. And, we'll find out. But uh, I really enjoyed the character. I really liked him. I love Keith Kwan's uh, delivery, everything mm-hmm. that he does within uh, in the episode as the character. And I look forward to seeing more of him. Yeah. But I like that he was an integral part of getting Loki back on track. So literally, they they cleared up the issue in the very first uh, episode of the issue that hand about Loki slipping through. Mm-hmm. And I'm. I don't think it'll come back right away about the slipping through time. Yeah, I think I think we're going to be done with that for a little bit, at least. I, I it think- might come back later on. So depending on how the, the show goes. But I really did enjoy that. Uh, well, we mentioned Casey, who I like. He's a character. It's an interesting character. We've seen him in season one. But I was telling uh, Steve before we start recording tonight and uh Casey, who's played by Eugene Cordero, he's from a TV show called Tacoma FD, and he was in the first three seasons. Now, he's not in the fourth season, so I'm I'm thinking that he got either more movies or roles, and or yeah. he's been concentrating on this, and uh, he left the show, but they did replace him. So if uh, that's, that's a cool suggestion for you listeners out there. If you like uh, comedy, out there it's about a fire department in seattle washington and they in tacoma but they uh (laughs) they uh they they had a wackiness about them and it's guys from broken lizard that are in there uh and kevin heffernan and steve lemay or lemmy is in it and they are uh it's hilarious it's the antics that happen within it and something i always highly recommend and suggest very M for mature <laughs> now. So there's a lot of cursing going on, especially with season four uh, after I just watched it. <laughs> but we also get another person that we had talked about on this uh, this podcast before as well when we were covering Good Omen season two. Liz Carr as uh, Judge Gamble. And mm-hmm. uh, she was the one that was in the wheelchair in yeah. uh, Good Omen season two. Yeah. Yeah. It was good to see some different people, different levels of the, the TVA we hadn't seen. We saw Judge, Rin- Judge Rinslayer, obviously, but we didn't see these other general, the, you know, General Dawes and the other judges there. And the old guy that we didn't really get introduced to who was kind of sleeping and then woke up a couple of times in the war <laughs> chamber there. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get more of those characters as the, the season progresses. We're going to see more of them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, X5, the one who uh who purged um mobius and d90 of course the one who who went and saw rinslayer in the past um yeah but uh, yeah so it's it, i'm i'm it's it's nice seeing these characters come back d15 and all of them to to, to reset the, these uh, but also to see like you said some other new new characters from behind uh, the TVA come into it uh, and, and to see kind of the inner the, the, the inner workings of the TVA that we got a little bit of last season, but we're getting a little bit more of it now. And of course, we have that scene, that that brief scene of all those soldiers running through the time door and B-15 mm-hmm. saying, you know, there's something more to this. This isn't just about Sylvie. This has got to be. And so I'm assuming they're probably going and fighting uh, the variants of He Who Remains, maybe. I don't know, but we might find out in well, later episodes yeah well like any of the disney plus marvel shows they're integral to what's going on within the mcu proper as far as the the movies are concerned which i think that has to do with probably from dr strange and the multiverse of madness and then anything else that's been going on within in the mcu or what we're about to see within the mcu yeah could so be, I, I think it's gonna be more more limited to Loki. I think, I think they're going to, I don't think it's going to be the broader picture. I think this is going to be seen, but we'll see. You never know. They'll probably just give like a, an Easter egg for whatever we need for the particular movies that are out there. Yeah. I love the fact too, that, you know, you mentioned it Hunter B 15 and I love how her Mobius are working together 
Whereas mm-hmm. before they were opposing, uh, you know, sides at one point in mm-hmm. last season, and now they're working together trying to explain to everybody that everybody is a variant, all because of what Loki had stated, uh, uh, kind of how Loki turns around. I also like the, uh, the the friendship between Loki and Mobius too. I love, but- see, I, I love that we got back to that a little bit because we I was we were a little worried about that. You know, the end of of last season when we saw him, we didn't realize, of course, in that last episode of season one that he was in the past, and yeah. so he was actually meeting Mobius uh, or a variant of Mobius before he and Mobius became friends. So I was really glad again that they got back to that buddy kind of. Uh, chemistry between the two of them because uh, I we we need that. That's what Loki. Yeah. That's what drove Loki in that first season. Really was there that buddy kind of buddy cop back and forth. You know, yeah. you know, good guy, bad guy. Is he a bad guy? Is, are we friends? Are we? No, we're not friends. Yes, we are friends. Kind of thing that they went back and forth with in season one. That now has kind of been solidified here in season two, and so we're going to see that. Uh, moving forward get getting bigger and and uh, and closer i hope so not close like good omens close but yeah but close yeah, yeah. i i just like uh the fact that too that loki when he gets into that boardroom when they're having the uh the briefing with the judge they he kind of points out to them because there's a painting and he kind of does something with the time stick mm-hmm. to show he who remains all the different various like sculpted versions of him to prove to them like hey this is the person that created this yeah, this is I the issue at was, hand because they still have you know, a severed robot's head in yeah, the back well, from be- last season right because that's the present so he went he he notices when he goes back in time you know he goes into the past he gets that recorder and he hears judge Rinslayer was part of he who remains you know uh part of that war that he remains had spent to to uh to back off his his you know he he describes it in the last episode of season of season one where he talks about the fact that he had to go and basically defeat all of a bunch of his variants in order to establish the tva to to you know straighten out the timeline create the sacred timeline and then create the tva from that and we hear that judge rinslayer has been there from the beginning now we don't know what version of that she is because remember she again she left in that last episode yes. and went through a time door and just was gone and we don't know where she went um so it's it's going to be interesting to see if we get more of her this season and if we we find out more of that backstory of her relationship between her and he who remains and what her what part she played in the time war that went on to establish the TVA and of course then of course it's gone through some sort of variations huh See what I did there? It's gone through <laughs> variations uh, over the years to where he uncovers those, like you said, those sculptures behind the wall. Yeah, yeah. It. Well, I'm sure more answers will come our way as yeah. uh, episodes and more continue. Uh, and more questions. <laughs> I, I also like the fact that they do the, in this particular show that that they kind of debunk certain things like. Like when Loki went back in time and met or borrows or OB, he puts it in his mind that he needs this particular device, and that's what they use with the loom. Yeah, and, I love it. It's, it's him and OB. And, working and then to, Mobius kind of picks it up. He goes, So you getting that information now? Because you're just remembering it. And then, oh, right. wait, I have it right here. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was great. The, the no, wait, yes. That was a perfect, like you said, the way Kihu Kwan uh, delivers that is great because we, you know, at first when Mobius says, well, do you have a temporal oral displacer or extractor? And he yeah. goes, no. And then we flash to the past of them building it, you know, yeah. and then we flash back to the present <laughs> where we see Kihu Kwan say no again. But then he's, this time he says, no, wait, yes. <laughs> like, like, and it's right it's, here and he picks yeah, it up <laughs> yeah yeah it's really really I, I love that whole sequence was the way they went back and forth away i can't reconcile this with my in my mind you know and the, he's saying the same lines uh at, at different times in his life but yeah it was it was great and uh just again the way he played that was really cool the fact that you know that the fact that they gave us the transitions mm. of in the future or the present it's timey wimey wobbly stuff in the in the present he's got glasses on 
But yes. in the past, he doesn't have glasses. So we're able to distinguish quickly yes. which period we're in. Which, by, which OB do we have? <laughs> right, which OB we're, we're looking at. So I thought that was that was a great subtle way for them to show us without having to show us the difference in, in the difference uh, of the past and the present and, and the future kind of thing. I thought it was, was great. So um, I'm looking also, forward to see what more they do. Yeah. I also like the, uh, the idea of how he stays stuck in this room and it, it's the same all the way, all the time. And it kind of reminds me, if you ever remember the movie click with Adam, Sandler. Sandler, right? Uh, he gets a remote control from of all things Bed Bath and Beyond, <laughs> and of course, it, it's supposed to be like the devil or somebody that gives him this remote, so that way he's constantly changing time, or and he's slipping through and fast forwarding, rewinding, and you know he's got the DVR functionality. It gave me that kind of vibe with that with the, when it comes to this room because yeah. you got or borrows, and you we don't know this character, and I'm like, oh, okay. It, it reminds me of that. Uh, I forgot who played the the main character. Oh, Christopher Walken. Walken. Yeah, yeah. Walken. Christopher yeah. Walken. Yeah, so. he's the scientist that that creates the remote. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's really cool. He's a cool character, and I can't like I said, I can't wait to see more of him. Uh, I'm really glad that we did get at least a little bit of Sylvia uh, De Martin. Uh, yes. In this, we saw her, you know, and obviously there's going to be more to that story as well, mm. because and I did get confused both times I watched. I did watch this twice, but I did get confused. And it's something they're going to have to reveal at some point, I'm sure, okay. is who prunes him. Because remember, I have he, a theory. He's got the let me let me finish my thought. and then I'll get, I, I want to hear your theory. He's got the thing and he mm-hmm. drops the stick. And yeah. so the, the thing goes green and then the phone is ringing and Sylvie is like sticking halfway out the, the elevator doors trying to ask for his help. And then all of a sudden he gets pruned from behind. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, did he just prune himself or did somebody? So what's your theory? My theory is he uh, a variant of him pruned mm. himself. Okay. And I think that variant will come into play with Mobius at that time by the next episode. And we'll get that answer right away. It's like, oh, okay, he's there still, but he was pruned. And then you'll see another variant of Loki at that point. And I I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more variants of that particular Loki again, because he was uh, with all the time slipping. Mm -hmm. And uh, something could have happened within that, uh, those time slips. Okay, that that's a that's a that seems like a valid theory. That makes sense. Um, so I like that. I like that theory. So, yeah. But I, I uh, want to know who's who's calling on the telephone because it was very Matrix, very Matrix with the phone ringing <laughs> and him just kind of looking at it. He's uh, going to answer it and he's going to go through the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you take the blue pill or the red pill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the episode was great and overall. It was interesting. It was a nice way to get back into it. It was only about 42 minutes long without mm-hmm. credits uh we do get like you said i love the fact that we did get see sylvia again so mm-hmm. we found out okay she did get to somewhere else after we last seen her before after she basically killed he who remains and she's in 1982 at a mcdonald's in Broxton, Oklahoma, on a branch timeline. Uh, don't ask me where Broxton, Oklahoma is. I didn't look it up. I don't know. So, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, and, and I thought that was interesting because I had to pause it to read that because it does say 1982, Broxton, Oklahoma, and then it says branch timeline. So that tells us that we're off the sacred timeline now. Correct. Uh, and into a branch into a branch timeline. And we may even have a different Sylvie here. I don't know. She uh, She seemed brighter, almost like... You know, the Sylvie that was sticking her arms through the elevator door looked like she's been through a battle. Mm. Um, and this Sylvie is very clean and and fresh. And she's like, I want one of everything. I want to try everything. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I well, she also I, looked like she was through the ringer as well to to some degree, like she'd been through like a battle. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. When the, the, the one that's in the elevator was mm. looks like she'd been through a battle. But the one that came out in Oklahoma, she's she's got she's all clean and fresh and she didn't look like she'd been in any kind of a battle at all not to me i mean 
she had a lot on her mind too because yeah she, I mean, she was definitely thinking about some stuff but like she had a clean uniform she wasn't wearing her tiara correct um, true, very true yeah but uh, other than that it, it didn't seem like she was that much the worse for wear when she walks into that mcdonald's that was definitely not a mcdonald's mcdonald's but a variant of mcdonald's <laughs> well it, it, yeah especially because I, I don't remember how those uh windows in the back were kind of like roundish out back then in 82 i remember mm-hmm. mcdonald's back then was very very boxy and straight glass and more red more red than orange like it, it looked more orange than and that tree whatever that tree was that on the that was on the wall yeah it that, wasn't they familiar. had the tree back then too did they okay okay yeah they okay. did I, they brought back certain motifs a lot of like the front counter how the tables look those were right from okay, my understanding so or remember okay. memory it's okay. just that they uh the the windows was like dead i'm like okay now if they start showing a play a playground or something in the back yeah, something's up with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So because that didn't come out until like the mid to late eighties. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was nice to see her. Uh, I love the fact that you know she makes that kind of joke about uh, uh, n- no squirrel. Yeah. No, uh, something else, and uh, nothing with a face. And nothing with yeah, no <laughs> squirrel, no rats, no. You're right, yeah. something else, and nothing with a face. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> And then she got really interested, but uh, obviously within that particular timeline, money is a thing. So where does she get the money? So obviously we're going to find her later on, probably because with the previews, we've seen her with the McDonald's uniform on. Oh, so see, she... I haven't watched any of the previews, so I didn't see that. But yeah, that's that's going to be interesting to see her her in a McDonald's with a McDonald's having to work her way uh, to pay off her food debt. Probably, <laughs> yeah, because that was the 80s back then. They could do that. Yeah. Uh, but there is a some sort of cross promotion with McDonald's and okay. with Disney Plus with Loki season two. Okay. So they're going to come up with some sort of special sauce that oh, is going to be okay. in McDonald's. So look out for that, listeners. If you're out there, check your local McDonald's if you're into eating McDonald's, because we I know a lot of people who aren't. But, you know, I'm sure just like with uh, Mulan with the Szechuan sauce mm-hmm. back in yeah. the day. I'm sure Ben Beck will be running out there to try to get all the sauces if it's that good. (laughs) Just the same. (laughs) But yeah, it was it was pretty cool to see her. Uh, One of the the cool things that I did like about the episode is uh, the temporal loom and how he has he sends Mobius out there with the extractor and he has him in that suit. And Mm -hmm. he explains to him that the suit has to hold off because you could age up. And yeah, I then, love the digital effect of the suit kind of disintegrating as he's walking and you can just see the 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 suit kind of disintegrating off from him but they did a really good job with the digital effect there. Yeah, and and the fact that Obi he goes, "Does this have a crack in it?" and Obi just puts duct tape right on top of it and he goes, "You're good." <laughs> yeah. But uh the fact that, you know, they send him out there particularly, not Loki himself because it, I guess somebody else has to do it for well, him. Loki, yeah, because Loki had to be extracted from the timeline. Yeah, and and he he time slipped out of there before they had. Yeah, they wouldn't have been. They wouldn't have been able to send. Loki and he was out ready there. to prune himself at one point too yeah. with the time He's, stick. No, was, not now. <laughs> yes, we're, but not right now. <laughs> was great. You got about but, an hour. You've got yeah. about five minutes. So <laughs> yeah, right. And I, I like the effects on that and how he was out there. The the big huge. <laughs> the big huge duct that was in the back of Mobius mm-hmm. <laughs> at that time walking out there. But that, that old scene just basically reminded me of in uh Infinity War when Thor goes to uh E Tree and they mm-hmm. make Stormbreaker and how you know Thor was out there and he had to open up the the iris or the eye and everything so that way they can make stormbreaker it gave me the same feels and the same look of that or maybe something out of a fantastic four comic too when you see them going through with uh with the cosmic rays and stuff but, yeah it was great to once again see that mix of technologies they had where they had the really big dials and buttons and things that you would think the tva would be more futuristic but it's got these and then it, it puts them like you said in this suit that's got this tube coming out the back of it and it looks like an old style 
you know, kind of astronaut suit kind of thing. So, yeah, I love I love what they've done with that in both seasons of this kind of mix of technologies. Yeah, the also, yeah, they also kind of like the tubes that you see at a bank when you at the drive through mm-hmm. which it has yeah. the suction or vacuum tubing to to send like information is like oh this is down okay and then he puts of course you know <laughs> obi puts the the piece of paper after he fixes something starts smacking it with a hammer and then puts it, he fixes it sends it back up yeah stuff like that and then on top of that the elevator too because mm-hmm. the elevators have like specific you know physical switches yeah yeah really cool um, but yeah, that, that's about it. Yeah, you know, we c- kind of covered a lot of what was going on with it. There's, there wasn't anything new. It was very, the episode really goes quickly too because it goes you're really so quick. engaged. We didn't have any missed minutes. We didn't have any missed minutes except for in the flash in the previously on because because you know when uh, when Mobius starts to ask, oh, I'll ask Miss Minutes, and Loki stops him and goes, well, no, no, she's part of it. So we didn't get any missed minutes. I did notice when the credits rolled that there were a couple of spots where we had blank blank uh you know blank uh, lines or blank spaces where mm. other cast members are obviously going to be filled in as they actually do appear in the episode so which is consistent with what marvel has been doing uh there was one quote that really did stand out to me and i'm going to get it wrong because i i should have wrote it down but it was when they're talking about uh, trying to tell the tva and mobius says what we're going to tell them that their whole lives have been a lie and that the gods are dead you know oh uh, yeah that was it was really telling to to go man how do you how do you tell these people that everything they've been doing their entire lives is just a waste is, actually is, i think i have it written down right here do you yeah, it's his Mobius 100 B-15 saying, hey, everything you've been doing is wrong and all your gods are dead. How are there people go. going to take that? Uh, and that's when he has to tell everyone what is going on mm-hmm. uh, right. to, uh, from Hunter B-15. Well, yeah. yeah, and I thought, I thought that was great because we have that idea of Hunter B-15 saying, we've all been plucked from a timeline somewhere. We all have a life to live out there. And, and some of us want to go back to that life. You know, even though we don't remember it, we want to go back to it. So it's going to be interesting to explore that theme throughout the rest of the season. Well, I just love what Mobius says in the elevator to to Loki because Loki tells him, well, you, your memory was wiped. He goes, I have no memory of having my memory wiped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I and of course, you know, you get X5 like looking at Mobius because he's such a he's a dick and he was just like uh i'm like he goes he's looking at the ski magazine saying uh, he was like commenting of like oh well what's this all about this is really this important information and to have and and then he goes what's so great about jet skis it's just another device to go on water or whatever and then Mobius just goes, jet skis are not much of a product, but more of a brand like Kleenex. And then he gets cut off halfway yeah, through that yeah. conversation. <laughs> I don't care. I don't, Mobius, I don't care. But then why did you ask? So, yeah. <laughs> really, really cool. Uh, oh, this is a, a pretty cool line. This is coming from uh, OB, but look, he's asking if the, pl- <laughs> if the plan doesn't work to OB. And OB replies, well, you heard about if you fall into a black hole and you turn into spaghetti. Loki's like, no, good. The less you know, the better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like one of those oblivious things that Loki's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had some great lines. Uh, I, uh, well, we already talked about who pruned uh, Loki and what my thoughts are. Mm-hmm. Uh Yeah, and I, the one thing I picked up was that Obi is hidden from all the rest of the TVA, regardless of the timeline, uh, memory wipes. Yeah, so, and, yeah, he's the only one. We kind of brought that up, but that it's so interesting that how he would have all his memories. Right, and like we said, you know, he said Mobius was his only visitor that he's had in 400 years. Every the every only other contact he's had is through these tubes coming in of people sending him work to do, and he mm. says, "I can't sleep. I can't. I can't do anything except work." And so, like I said, there's more to this character than uh, than meets the eye, so to speak. Yeah, uh, that that was all about it that I could say. But the end credit scenes uh, in my in my notes is interesting. Uh, there are a lot of sticky notes, and you got to zoom in on them. Everybody, remember how last last mm-hmm. season when I was going through everything and 
breaking down like certain scenes like we got to see us uh, like comic book uh like easter eggs and stuff like that we that we enjoyed well and this i kind of like zoomed in on a few things just to see but because the ending and credit scenes show a lot more there and mm -hmm. uh if you enhance on them something talks about hexes which kind of relates me to scarlet witch and okay. dreams so mm -hmm. uh there was mentioning of a hex moment or a hex event and that would be more or less because we've already had to deal with uh like i said dr strange in the multiverse of madness and that's the last that we heard from scarlet witch and not to say that there could be other variants of that particular you know wanda maximoff and that way she could still be the scarlet witch but the tva could still be monitoring her and her actions to see if they go because of after that last event and, and it said something about the about a beast and last season right before because we saw a lot of the loki's the variant loki's battling with uh alias remember the beast that uh that was mm -hmm. like kind yeah. of like yep the watchdog the guard dog yeah the guard distraction. Dog. so yeah. i saw something printed there too so i'm curious hmm. if that will okay. come up eventually mm -hmm. But uh, I think they're just putting that there for us to look or maybe just to distract us. You never know. They, they could, know. It could be a ploy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that's that's all I had when it came to that. But other than okay. that, was there any feedback? I posted it. I posted it in Facebook as well as Instagram. We didn't get anything. We got a lot of likes. That's about yeah. it. But uh, we didn't go. get really any feedback. But you know, people get shy, okay. or they just yeah. want to hear us. You know, I I reached out to somebody actually because we got something from YouTube for the last one, and I mm -hmm. talked. I brought it up on Gen V, and uh, or even before that. They, you know, a lot of people just like to listen. So that's a yep. good thing. You know, it's, a, it's always appreciated. Uh, before we uh, leave you and go forth into the TVA, <laughs> uh, we will talk about feedback and how to get that out there. So obviously, like I already mentioned, we have a Facebook group. So for you to send any feedback, I posted an image of the episode that we're covering and, uh, you know what we're covering specifically so for that one it was loki season two episode one so i took an image put that there and said hey leave your comments in the in the image below so you can find that on facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels go there uh follow us and then uh just follow the images when i do post that way you'll you'll be aware of it same thing with instagram all you have to do is go to at panels to pixels podcast on instagram same image same thing just leave your 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 comments in the image below and uh obviously you can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels two is spelled out to you pixels and the number one at gmail.com you could just type out a, a regular email and send it to us and we'll read it or if you want you could easily just record yourself and then we'll play it on the show so you could be part of the show at that way and we'll comment that uh, about that as well so uh that those are ways for you to get in touch with us uh we can be found on youtube so all you have to do is search for panels to pixels podcast uh while you're there subscribe uh ring the bell so you'd be aware of whatever new content is up obviously the podcast audio wise is on there people like to use that as a way to listen and uh give us a thumbs up you could actually leave comments too on the podcast which we got when somebody talked about good omens uh season two uh the last episode that we did when we covered five and six so that was pretty cool uh we could be heard on spotify google play apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use uh word of mouth is greatly appreciated so if you could tell a friend just tell them where you could find us and just like at those platforms and if there's a rating or review, please do so. It would be greatly appreciated, especially in Apple Podcasts, because that is the one that everybody seems to look at for for anybody for suggestions for uh, 
podcasts that are out there. But uh, yeah, that that was fun talking about. Uh, finally, getting back into Loki and uh, talking about season two. Uh, well, where can listeners hear you, Steve? Well, obviously, I can be heard right here on Panels to Pixels, but uh, I send in various voicemails to our friends' podcasts uh, out there, and they play them uh, for for us as for people to hear as feedback, and uh, so you can hear me there um, occasionally. <laughs> That's about it right now. I'm uh, kind of not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's life. <laughs> it happens but we have fun with uh what we're doing here and like you said everybody could hear you here if need be and uh they could probably hear you on other podcasts too with the various feedbacks that you do uh you could hear me not only just here on panels to pixels podcast you could hear me on adrenaline cinema podcast as well uh where we cover action adventure fantasy thriller suspense films all that stuff to get your adrenaline going uh i the last episode that i just released was escape from new york with our friend frank rodriguez so uh we got into a long discussion on that one so it was uh like almost two hours <laughs> nice so you got that to look forward to uh i, I kind of tagged kurt russell and uh, john carpenter on uh some of the postings on instagram so hopefully somebody will respond to it because uh, i liked it, the fact that we got john ham liking uh our instagram post for good omen season two episode five and six and and we were talking about fletch so he was pretty cool about uh liking that if it's not him it's most likely the person that's in charge of his media but regardless we gotta like and i like that uh, yeah. you, you could also hear me on fantasy picks movie edition with rob frank Adam and sometimes Patrick, and uh, that can be found on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network as well. So uh, just go to piratecoreentertainment.com and you could find links for Adrenaline Cinema podcast, watched it in the 80s, and uh, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. So you can check that out there, and uh, you'll have all our uh, social media connections as well and where to email us. But for now, that was this episode. But next episode, we will be covering probably Gen V, episode three. And after that, we'll be doing uh, Loki season two, episode two separately. So we're trying to do these separately so that people don't get confused or have to sit through a whole podcast saying, well, I didn't want to hear about Gen V or I don't want to hear about Loki season two. You know, that, that way it differentiates it up. Yeah. But I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels podcast. So different panel, different pixel, same podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.